the protocol is there's like a three way authentication process. And so you hit an API yep. and then it returns a 402 payment required Yep. in WWW authenticate header that has a macaroon. That's what else, that's what um, uh, LND calls their auth tokens. And so correlating uses runes, mm -hmm. but so you have the macaroon and you have the invoice. Mm -hmm. And so the recipient, sorry, the client pays the invoice and then when they hit back against the server, they pass both, they pass the macaroon, they pass the macaroon. along with the pre-image. Yep. But it doesn't say here what the, it doesn't say here that you pass the invoice as well, but I guess it's because the thing that you're hitting is like an HTTP server. And so the state of the HTTP server is that it knows what the auth tokens are and the associated invoices are, right? Yep. And so the server, that you're hitting because it has the specific um, macaroon and associated invoice when you pass back the pre-image for that invoice that I think it, it makes offer. I think it takes the lookup out of the loop so that you don't actually Yeah, and you don't have to look up against the you don't have to look up against the nodes for when they pass it back cuz you have the invoice associated with that macaron and so right i guess you don't because you the node doesn't have to go tell the server again oh hey this has been paid right, right? exactly it makes it really okay. quick right. for you to verify right. that this pre-image is paid if you have the invoice because the invoice contains the hash and so the you can image with just the pre-image to the invoice you can verify that that thing has been paid and so when the mm -hmm. server first hit the lightning node and got back the macaron and the invoice mm -hmm. it holds that as like the key value and then it just does the look up there. Yeah, okay. So I guess like... So that does make sense. Right. So I guess like on... So this is making me question like what we're doing. Maybe we don't actually have to tie them together, right? All we need is like an issue auth thing, right? We don't need the verify auth. Yeah, you don't need the verify auth. That's you just cool. need the issue. Because the, 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 the server is going to do... Or whatever the HTTP thing that you set up is... Is right. going to do the verification. Because it has the rune and the associated invoice. Right. So yeah, I'm kind of like, hmm. Then I'm like, well, basically this plugin, well, we do we need this plugin? Yeah, we need the plugin, I guess. Like ver having an issue auth thing is pretty nice, right? Because you can like say build yeah. this like rune thing. It really just seems like when I generate the rune of like a, this is like the flag that you add into it, right? Of that, hey, give me an associated invoice for this rune. You don't even have to associate them, right? Like. You just need a. You just need to also generate an invoice, but it's fine. We can just finish this. It's well, cool. you got to tie the two somewhere. You got to store somewhere that it's tied together. Right? Is that 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 rune is going to be invalid? Until no, the because the server, whenever you send back the invoice, it like. So this is issue auth will send an invoice and a rune back to like a caller, which is like a web app, right? Or like a. Everybody, thing. if they know the node that you're hitting against, they can just like hit your node with a uh, commando, and as if they have the rune. And you haven't like encumbered it. Yeah, but that would. But assuming, but them using the rune to hit your, what do you call it, your lightning node shouldn't give them access to the um the web app, right? The web app yeah, should generally. Oh, well, I guess because you could just have it so that the rune that you generate doesn't. What it doesn't really need any permissions. Yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, I feel like I'm right. The rune part seems. Yeah, the rune doesn't need any permissions. It doesn't need any restrictions on it because you have you never actually use the rune to access the node again. You're not accessing the node. You're accessing a third party resource. So you're like, accessing the server. So the the rune would be like, yeah, the rune would have to be would be something that like the server implemented. So wait, are we like basically? Is that all we need to do is just generate an invoice? Are we like? Uh, yeah, are we making this too complicated? I think we're making this too complicated. The, I don't think we actually need server, a whole thing. Well, I think we literally just yeah. need like a server that can like get invoices, and the rune part I think is associated with the web server, right? And then the because like the rune restrictions will be like so if we're writing like a web app, we would define our own restrictions, our own policies for like our web app, right? And then yeah. we would like ha keep that on our side, 
so we would generate the macaroon first off and then um, all we would need to be able to do is call get invoice and send the invoice back right with the, the room yeah that's specific and you could just I mean, you could even just use like a web token or whatever right i mean it's just like yeah it doesn't normal, actually matter just normal off it doesn't matter on. Yeah, okay, so we don't need any of this. I think we were over there. Yeah, you don't need any of this. So it's like, you don't even need to implement anything on this. You just need to get, get an invoice. And then on the... Okay. Good talk. Good talk. Good talk. Yeah. Alright. Um, I think what you do need is like, okay, so if you wanted to like build a like, um, whatever, it's fine. If you wanted to build like a, um, Okay, so if I wanted to build like a service, maybe I should just like write a service and we could just set it up and get it running, right? Yeah, sure. I mean, this is just so for this one. Yeah, so you want to just make a new flask thing? Yeah, uh -huh. is there like a flask? Um, what do you call flask. it? It's like a flask template. I'm just gonna make a new one. Sign. Forget this. Yeah. I'm gonna make a new one. Go to uh, oh. top left. Not that one. The other one. No. Top left with the Replit logo. I put like over here. Yeah. yeah great. Flask. Um, I don't know. Oh, I have a oh, I have a whole project this would be really fun to add to, but that's like another thing. It kind of sucks. Whatever. I have like yeah. an existing API I could add this to, but uh, let's let's and go. Let's just find a new one. Okay, I don't know. Like, um, pay per view. So I forget how this, I don't actually know how Flask works. It's fine. We'll just set up a really simple thing. That's okay. I do. Great. So yeah, it's just that route. That's just a get request against that. Um, okay. So is there a way to add, like, I know how to do this in, oh, fuck. Great. Um, uh, great. Yeah. Um, okay, so when you hit the route, we'll just like say, hey, you just got these five cent sats. So basically what I need to do, is there like, does Flask have the concept of like a wrapper that gets called before this thing gets called? Yes, well, Python does. And so you just put the function wrapper above uh, that one, right? How do I do that? I don't know, how it's like a... You just have to write a wrapper. Or, I mean, what what do you want? Or what do you want uh, it to hit? Yeah. Um, verify auth. Does that work? Yeah. I don't know how this works. And then you have to write the verify auth function and declare it as like a, whatever. Mm. like a way to declare it as a wrapper. I forget what it is. It's a decorator. Intermediate Python review. How to make it a decorator. Yeah. Oh, it's like Python, right? I forgot to make the word Python. Oh. Yeah. Um, I have like a whole intermediate Python repo thing that I wrote that has this. It should be super simple. Do 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 print description. I think should be nested in function. Do 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 Python decorator decorator decorator. All right. My decorator function. My func pass. Yeah, I just messaged it to you. Oh, it's oh. Oh. It's just my uh. On this guy I'm gonna like I think it's just like wait can you only have one per function oh you pass back a function it's that easy okay, okay. yeah okay I got this why is this unhappy can I have one can I have one decorator uh you can do multiple decorators I think no, you have to. So you have to initiate the decorator correctly, right? Which is that you do um, can you, that thing that I just sent you. The mm. thing that's got like a little wrapper cut that's or whatever. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Nested decorators. Oh, wow, wow. Right, funk tools. Do I need this? Nah. Uh, yeah. There, that one. That function tools dot wraps whatever. Tools, turn wrapper. Yeah. Oh, that's let's do. Maybe that lets you call whatever. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, 
I don't know if I need funk tools, but whatever, we'll pull it in all the same. Okay, so this stuff is this. Let me get here. No, sucks. Um. My stuff's a little set weird. Return wrapper. Oh, this is cool. This lets you like wrap a function and it just like print start and end before the thing runs. Exactly. Um, and so you should be able to just run that and then it'll do in the console, it'll do uh, like. Should I run? Why is this unhappy? Uh, let's see where funk is. Yeah, import. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's it. My default takes a And then this down here should just be, yeah, that works fine. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah. Warning, do not use in protection. Okay, that seems cool. Um, so now I can do curl HTTP. Does it say what it's on? Port 81. This got used five sats. Did it print stuff in the console? Uh, it is because it's flying up for another. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, because it's not returning. Uh, you just get rid of the app route, whatever, or just comment that out and see if that's working. <laughs> but then it won't return it when I call it, right? Uh, there won't be anything that like calls it. Yeah, but then just Here. do index blood or whatever, right? Just like make sure that that's working. There you go. Yeah, so it's doing the start end. Never. Wait, right. did it, oh, wait, where did it do it? You see it in the console? I see Those the are, console. It's at the top. Oh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah gotcha. Right. It's weird is like, why does it not... Um, When I hit it, it should like print it again, right? Yeah, so just hit refresh. It doesn't print it though. Hmm. I think that's because it's just running. The print stuff. Oh, I guess they're wrapping around run or whatever. Yeah, the print stuff might be weird. It's cool. Okay, I'm not yeah. going to worry about it too much. Um, before we run this, we're, we're going to do two things. We're either going to... So what we need to do is we need to verify the... So if no auth, right? If no auth, um, call... Uh, PyLN clients RPC, right? To get an invoice, to make an invoice, return that. Um, if there is an auth, um, verify, verify the. Yeah, but you need to get the RIN too. You need to get the RIN and the RIN. Or I guess this is no, thing we want, right? The the rune would be specific to this service and we don't have like a rune thing. We can just do it with like no rune, like an empty rune. Um because yeah. the rune does restrictions on this like on the server. So it's like custom to the server. So I like that might be kind of a fun demo project to write up, right? How to use runes to like build Yeah. Like I mean you have like the the rune or whatever. I'm just thinking sort of like, hey, you need you've got this thing you need like some token that you're that you're passing back in that macro section or whatever that is associated with that user. It doesn't have to be associated with the user. It's whoever has the pre-image has access to the to the API. Yeah, that, that's what that's what I mean, right? But it's yeah. just like a like, hey, the the gap person passes back their like token and the pre-image or whatever, and then yeah. like that gets stored. Well, isn't the idea that they use that? Well, I mean, I guess it's just like for. On the node side, it doesn't it doesn't matter that like who the user is or whatever. What matters is the service, mm -hmm. the service is run, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, if there's an auth, verify the preimage is valid. If no auth, if no auth, send back a invoice to pay rate. Yeah. This is like hard to see. And you also need a token. Just pass it in the macro section. Uh, we can just do yeah. empty for now and add it in later, right? Yeah. 
Um, okay, so I need a way to check the headers. So I need to like, how do I check the headers in um, Flask? Flask check headers in Decorator. Is that a thing? It's gotta be a thing. Gotta be a thing. Oh my gosh, look at this. Create a decorator handle token validation. No way. Sorry. <laughs> like, um, okay, so this is the one. This is our check token thing. This is what we're doing. Okay, so I just need to do... Where does the request object come from? Import requests. Where does this request thing come from though, right? You see what I mean? This like request doesn't have like a... Uh, I think that you have access to... I think in Flask you just get access to it. Right? Okay. It's just like the args and quarks or whatever. Or not sure. that, sorry. It's index. Does index have a request or whatever? Like, I'm just like, it's had to be... Uh, right, this looks good. Remove the basic. Okay, so we just want the... First thing we should check for is this authorization header, right? So first thing we check is like, so if we go back to protocol. Um, first thing we check is if there's an, an authorization header, right? Mm -hmm. This guy? Okay, so... Oh, where did the damn thing go here? So first thing we want to do is check headers, authorization. I think it's capitalized. I don't know if that matters. Uh, actually, this isn't request. This looks like a typo. I'm just going to... That's not how you spell headers, Lisa. Um, let's see. Request the headers. Check on header. A string equals that. Um, a string that like parts of parts equals equals a string dot. Is there like a split? I think there's a split. A split. Max split one. I don't know what max split one means. I don't know what that does. I'm just gonna pretend it's fine. Split, max split. This is weird. I don't, other people's code is usually terrible. Um, why am I such a, hang on, I'm like such a like, can't do stuff weird. I gotta like, okay, where's the, it's called shell? No, it's the prompt, command, thing, console. Okay, so if I have a, my question is like, okay, like, let's say if I have like an empty string, right? Or like, does this work? Hello, print, hi. Does that work? No, why is the console broken? Okay, shell. If I have like, okay, so if I've got like this headers is like a, a dictionary, right? So let's say example is like a dictionary. And if I put like something in here that's like, hi. And then I can get it out, right? Like that. What if I type something in that's not in there, not included? What does it return? Oh, it blows up. So we're gonna be like, um, not in EX. Right. Okay, that's what we want to do. I think. I'm guessing here, but um, if uh, undo. It's like okay. Like so, if it's not in the headers. Right. Then what do we want to do? We want to um, go get invoice, right? Uh, else we want to pass, whatever. Um, otherwise, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get that auth out. Um, header request dot request. Headers. I don't know if this is going to work. Authorization. Not split. Max split's going to actually do want to split this into all the parts. If the length of the parts is 
zero, then return the same thing. You're gonna do the same thing. I feel like pass in like a blank thing, right? If it's invalid, like go get an invoice or whatever. Um, okay. Otherwise, um, if, what's the other one? www auth is like the other thing It could be in here. Authenticate. No, this is what we return back. This will be in our response, right? There's nothing else we would check for. Okay. So if it doesn't have it, then we're responding back with this. Otherwise, we're like moving forward. Okay, so let's like do the happy path, right? Um, uh, let's see. Are we assuming? Let's just assume that it's the same amount. So we would assume for there to be how many parts here? There's like one, two, three. There's one, two parts, right? And the second one you split as a colon. Um, so what we'd assume is, let's see, if it's equal to two and the parts one, zero equals LSAT. Um, then the, I don't know, parts one split, why did it do that? Parts one dot split on the colon, right? Um, max split one um, would be like B rune, and then the second part would be the something else. Um, the second part is the invoice, right? No, the second part is going to be the pre image. Pre image, pre image. Let me do this here. Um, so then we do verify pre image. Um, if not valid, if not valid, go get invoice. Okay. So somewhere in here we need like a list of like, I don't know. Um, uh, invoice hashes is like just like a dictionary, I guess. Mm. It's a dictionary vine. No, let's just make it a list. I don't know. How dorky do we want to make this? Do we make it like really, um, def verify invoice? Back. Super dorky. Def verify pre image. Pre image. Um, this won't like persist across the database, but man, my oh, this is gonna be bad. Whatever. Oh, uh, the white space on this is gonna be all fucked up. Whatever. Oh, I fucking hate Python. Whatever. Okay. Um, for hash in invoice hashes. If I don't know. Pre-image hash. Pre-image hash equals. Forget how many shots. I don't know. I need shot two fifty two of the from hash lib import shot two five six. It's a simple shot two fifty six, I think. Right. Shot two fifty six of the invoice. Of the pre-image dot hex digest. Sure. That was a fun stump the professor question. Why do we do double shot 256? Isn't like length extension yeah. attacks? And so if we know both the pre image and the, and the thing that we're, um, sorry, if we know both the message and the digest already, then we don't need to protect against length extension. Right, okay. I also just like double check that it's not actually in there. We can just be. When uh, as length extension is when it's you don't uh, it's called you don't know the message and so the message could have been changed on on the way. I see, but since we know what the message has to be, we're okay. Exactly. Okay. Is the two hundred fifty half to the payment pre image right? So we just do. It's just a shot two, but the two fifty six bit hash. Okay. Cool. Did 
I do the same. Okay, so if hash equals preimage hash. Mm, we can make it a lookup table. So if we made this just like a table, whatever, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. This is like, okay. So now I can just use my fancy little method I wrote. So if verify preimage, preimage, um, if the preimage verifies, there's also like the, we're ignoring the first part of the rune because like whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, if we verify the preimage and uh, what do you call it? Then we would do the thing where we just call the function, right? Where's the thing where we just like call function? This one, right? So if the preimage verifies, we do the stuff. Gosh darn it. I'm like, I'm like, this is going to be a mess. This is not going to. We can just return this. Return function result. Okay, that's like the nice thing. If invalid, we're gonna just like return. I don't know. There should be some like way. I don't know how you like return a um. I don't know. Return a four hundred two thing. This is return this. This and this are gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go get an invoice and return like a, a four hundred two payment required thing, right? I guess if it's not, if the, your payment's invalid, should you return a four hundred two? Should you return something else? Um. Uh. Sure, you just pass back the same or two payment required. Yeah, okay. I don't know what the result is. Uh, I don't know what a result looks like. How do I make a result in Flask? That seems... Here we go. Return make response. Great. Okay, cool. Um, response request.get URL. What is this? This is weird. Um, URL for token validation. Uh, okay. Requests dot get. Pen the token to the header by using the payload. I mean, this is kind of what we want to do, but like, why am I so confused? Yeah, you add it to like request dot headers or something. Requests dot headers. dot headers. Response. Request dot get. Response dot status code. This actually like fetches the thing. This actually makes the get request, which I don't actually want to do. I think I want to make a new response. Make yeah. response thing. Okay. I want to make a response. Mm, let's make a response. Oops, wrong one. Let's like make a response. Make response. Maybe this is something they've implemented. I don't understand where these things come from. Make response, whatever. I want to like pass back a thing. Okay, we have to do. Well, we need to add in the lightning part here in a second. But uh, where's the flask doc? Make response. Yeah. Should I see what this is? API. Oh, flask response versus flask make response. Uh. Call make response. There it is. Uh, response return value. How do I? Where's an example? Why does this suck so hard? Um. Oh my god. Why? Why is it like this? I just need. I just need like a really simple. Oh my god. Uh. Mm, I think I want, I think I want, I want to be able to set like the status and the headers and all that, right? Yep. Uh, uh, okay, maybe I'll just do like a response from whatever. I'll just do like a default response thing. So like return response. Ugly response is none union interval interval bytes. I can just do none. That's fine. I don't even need like any data in here. I just need headers and stuff, right? So I can just do none, and then I need four hundred two is my status code, right? Haha. -ha. 
And then I need some headers. So I can just add some headers in here. I don't know what this is. I don't need mime type. I don't need content type. I don't know what direct pass through means. I'll just, I can ignore those things. So I can set the status and the headers and that's like it. So I can set the, I think I can just do status here. Status equals this and then headers equals whatever the headers I'm gonna make are um, off headers. So now I just need to make this off headers object. So the off headers object headers equals, I don't know. I need like a new header thing. I'm gonna make a new one. Headers. This is why this is like this. Ugh. To create a new headers object, pass the list to other headers with default values. Headers. How do I just make a new one of these? Oh my gosh. I feel like this is flask plus example equals really easy example there we go okay Oh, that's easy. Okay. No, it's like a um. Go, go, go. Um, and the response dot headers www authorization, right? Equals uh, whatever you want it to be. Okay, and so the spec says you set it to the macaroon object. I'm going to ignore that. I'm just going to not pass back a macaroon object. We're just going to pass back an invoice object. So we'll do L402. And we need www authenticate is the thing here. So this is www authenticate. And then we need the L402. Uh, macaroon is going to be empty. I'll just call it a rune because why not? Be empty. And then. Um, the rune will be empty, and then what else does it have in here? It's got that, the comma after it, and then the invoice data. Okay. So that with the comma after it, rune with the comma after it, and then what is it called? The invoice? Like that. And this needs to be like, um, I forget, is it like this? Dot format. Okay, so let's just say my invoice for now is like, that's not actually a thing, right? But this will like, this should like kind of do the whole thing, right? Um, is there a way to like go to, I can just fall through here. That's fine. This will pass, okay. I wonder if this actually works. Whatever, I'm not worried about it. Okay, so we'll just fall down here and return to www. Okay, so this should like in theory work now. Provided I haven't like totally messed up anything. Did it run? I can't tell. I stop. I don't know. Do the thing. Okay, so now if I like do curl again. Um, wait, that didn't do anything. Uh. I'm not convinced that this like verify thing is like working correctly. Because the first time that we called it, like when we were just shot it doing like basic stuff, it like didn't. So 
possible. Like if I do curl this and I add it after app dot route or yeah, I can try it. That the good. decorator order. Um. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Decorator order might be a thing. Um. Stop and retry. No. Oh. Yeah. Request has no attribute headers. All right. Now we're now we're kicking with gas. Um. Yeah, I don't know where this request thing came from. This request thing here, they just call it request. I don't think that's actually a thing. I think the stuff that we're looking at was wrong. I think there's like in the args like a thing that's like a request, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, there's a way to get it off. It's like a, I think it's, yeah, there's something in there, a way to get the request off. Yeah. Um, add header response. Where's this like add header thing? Just ask Ghostwriter. <laughs> well, tell me. Where's the Ghostwriter? Ghostwriter's over here in like Ghost. Mm, how do I? How do I? Um, get the. How do I get the request object in a flask response in a flask? I don't know. Endpoint. Flask endpoint. Cool. Cool. Import request from flask. Okay, that's easy. Cool. Makes sense. This work now? It's not out. Mm. Okay. Oh no, went boom. My uh, error it got an exception on this, is just fine. No, Flask has no attribute response. Here. Oh, I think I spelled that wrong. No? No. Response. That's right. Um, right. Flask has no attribute yeah. response. Uh, I think it's from Flask import response or whatever. And then uh, wait a sec. Sure. No. Wait, you have to do you have to do Flask for the app. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. I understand. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, Flax. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's try again. One more time. Ba -ba. <laughs> I didn't fall apart on me now. That's great. Hey, we got 402. That's awesome. Nice. Okay, that's what we wanted. Cool. Yep. Uh, no. Model request has no header attributes. Request not headers. Is this? No s. Yeah, but what line is no, that? Parts line 25. Request dot. Oh, okay, great. Cool. Stop. I feel like this object was like slightly different. I don't think I have to do all this, but it's fine. Um, yo, needs payment. Hey, that's cool. Um, Sweet. If we do it without this, will it like? Oh no! Don't 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 cancel. That's nice. Hey, I finally made something that'll like stop me from. Okay. Um. So if I call this, it should just be like needs payment. Okay, I should be able to see it with like the V here. Um, that'll tell me the rune and then voice stuff. Cool. So this comes back as I expected it, right? Yep. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, you just call, I'll just call it like, no, like LN key or something. On which one? Here? Yeah, instead of rune. Here? Sure. Yeah. It doesn't really matter since they're key value pairs. Like, um, if someone puts, yeah. you could like, you have a rune instead of a macaroon, it doesn't really matter. Probably want to keep oh. the namespaces separate. I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, yeah, you can call it like, you call it like auth token or just token in invoice, right? Yeah. Um, you can just call it token. Um, uh, token will be like specific to the, um, yeah, it doesn't really matter what it is because that's going to be, the token's going to be specific to the server, right? Like whatever the server access this thing. Um, and so like your app should not care what this token is. You should just know that you need the token, like send the token around, right? Um, 
Okay, so like, let's just like, let's do if, um, I don't know, let's do like, if the hash um, magic token Oh wait, I need to do if the let's choose the pre-image equals magic token. That's like kind of cheating. Okay, cool. So now what I should be able to do is if I call the same thing. So if I oh, and do that, what I should do? Um, if I stop it and restart it now, um, ah, don't do that. If I stop it, restart it, and I do a curl. And I give it a header that says authorization L402. And what's the second part? I didn't do an empty thing and then I should be able to do, what was it, magic token? Um, what happened? L402, did I spell that right? L H authorization L402 magic token. Oh no, I called it LSAT here, so I like the LSAT. Uh, we, that's, that has to change to L402. Yeah, okay, let's change it. So let's make this L402. Um, something's weird is happening. Oh, this doesn't look great. Let me stop. Start. This console is hard to type on. It's unhappy. Yeah, just need to say magic token. Yep. Okay, so it succeeded, but we hit a new problem. Um, she needs to be encoded before hashing, so I just need to. I don't think this is used now. Um, so now this needs to be. Oh, I need to encode a string. I forgot how to do that. Do I do like bytes? Do you remember how to take a string and make it into bytes? How do I convert a string to bytes? How to convert? How to convert a string to bytes for SHA-256 in Python? I should know I'm in Python. Three free messages remaining. I just have to hit encode. Okay, that seems fine. Right, encode UTF-8 should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, that seems fine. Okay. So. Uh, so I'll fork that and then we can run it from mine and I have GoFigure okay. unlimited. I think I can finish it without asking any more questions. <laughs> okay, we got four twos there. Um, that didn't work. That's annoying because what is it? Magic token. It should have worked, right? Authorization L forty two magic token. It's not printing anything, so I don't know where it's failing. No, you're printing magic token in the pre-image spot. Yeah, that's where it should be. And like, if the yeah. pre-image is, is equal to magic token, it should magically let me in. Um, uh, can you console, can you, sorry, can you uh, print it? Yeah, I need to print it here. Let's just print. Oh, I know what it is. There's no hashes in this hash list, so it's not even doing it. Okay. Yeah. It's quick magic change, okay. Alright, alright, alright. This time for real. Can I do it? I don't know. I can do it. Hey, we got it. This cost you five sats. Okay, so that works that time. Sweet. Um I can get rid of the V and it'll like a little less easier to see. So now it goes through and if I change this to anything else, it'll be like needs payment. So okay. Now I just have the so there's just like a couple more things to do. Um what all we need to do is, um, okay, so now all we need to do is wire in the, um, what do you call it, the lightning part, right? Yeah. Okay, so all I need to do is call a, I don't know, can I like do import pyln from pyln client? Is there like a RPC example? Import, import RCC, is that a thing? I don't know if that's a thing. I don't think that's a thing. Um, I'm gonna go look this up really fast using handy dandy and What? 
Um, how do we do this in like the tests? Test something. Pylon client import. I'm sorry. The client. There we go. Lightning RPC. That seems like a winner, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, I know that there's something called giant node.py in here. Um, okay. From this guy, import dot client in our lightning RPC. Okay. So now I want to like go look up this example, see, figure out how it's using it, right? So I'm just going to open up this file in here. Lightning RPC. Okay, so, okay, this is cool. This is fun. Um, all we have to do is we make, so we start up the thing. Um, I can make like the ln RPC equal to lightning RPC. I just need to pass it the path of where the thing is running, right? Um, I don't actually know where my lightning node is running. Do I have like a lightning directory? Do I have it's a lightning? Right in the shell. Just do lightning D. Lightning D. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, let's close the D. You're just getting the invoice. You don't actually have to pay it right now. Or, well, you can just pay it yourself. Oh, yeah. wait a second. Core Lightning can't settle its own invoices. <laughs> wait, really? Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Wow, it's running a super old version of just Core Lightning. What the hell? Yeah, no, you gotta go to, um, you gotta go to, Broken. uh, dot replet and do, um, Called. You gotta go to dot replit and change the channel to uh, the next channel to unstable. Which is unstable? Yeah. Unstable, okay. Um, and then you gotta replit.nx and install Bitcoin D, and you have to start Bitcoin D as well. Yeah. Or you can use that on. It's just too lightning, right? Is this gonna run on a. I need to like. Is it just see lightning? So they need D? I think it's just see lightning. Um, I need to set it to run on Replit or like on Registest, right? Yeah, you just start it on Registest. So just do Bitcoin D dash Registest dash name then. Bitcoin D Registest fallback fee. Yeah, that's an important one. I don't know. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah. I've done this many times. Uh, I had a pretty fire tweet. About, about no fallback fee anymore? Um, yeah. About this one? I don't know. I read a pretty great, great tweet today, too. I don't know if you saw it. My uh, CTV tweet. I didn't... I, I don't... Maybe? That's pretty good. I'll send it to you. Sorry, network threads, loading things, whatever. How do I like, how do I background a job? I always forgot how to do this. Does it matter? Can you start a new shell? Why is there a new shell? Can I get a new shell? Hey. It's my yeah. new mini D. Uh, it should be dash 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 dash. Right? Yeah, this one's dash dashes. Is that it? Did I have anything else? Uh, I think so. I should know this. Sure. Is there reason my like upload.nix stuff didn't whatever, it doesn't matter. This is on ten dot one. How is this even worse than the last one? Wait, what? See lightning ten dot one. That's not unstable. I mean, I thought I updated it to unstable. The fuck? Something's uh, weird. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's like... That's an issue. Right. So that needs to be fixed. Um, yeah. Are you running Bitcoin D? Or? Yeah, I think so. I thought I was running Bitcoin D. It, next package is unstable. That's Um, I don't know. It seems to have broken it. Undefined variable Bitcoin D at Replinix. Oh, is this because I have it in 
Oh, can you go back and do, uh, drop that next to lightning? I didn't oh, like this wait. one, though. Pack just died. I could just die. Okay, it's yeah. fine. They're in there now. They're in there, They're like, there. four times. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Let's just do no. Close this. There you go. No, that should work. Okay. Whee! Uh, that just network equals stretch test. Cool. Started. Great. Okay. Um, I want a new shell. So I want to ask. Right. Uh, can I do that? I think I can do that. Oh, this is so weird. Wait. Dash rush. Okay, what? Dash dash network equals rush dash. You have to do that then too. Oh, here's actually a fun one. Is that I figured out. So if you go to the dot repl file, yeah, yeah. Else, um, you just go to. Um, hang on one sec. I'm just gonna put this in here. So this is my. This is what I was trying to get. Is this RPC thing, right? Yeah. Um. Actually, I need. Do I need to give it? Let me go look at the. I need to give it the lightning RPC thing. So I need to actually tell it that I need the lightning RPC thing. There we go. That's cool. I actually knew it was there. If you go to the dot repl file, there's an env section now. And you just get all your environment variables for your shell in there. Dot repl here. Yeah, there's like an env section. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Draw find env. No, 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 and you. Um. Uh, or you can just make a new one or whatever. It's uh. That's cool. I'll look at it later. Yeah, that sounds right cool. There. It was right there. You just missed it. Um, here? There you go. And, right, and so, like, uh, 127. Yeah. And so. Oh, I see. And then, yeah. And so for all those, you just set, like, whatever the aliases you want are, right? So you can do, like, set that equal that, or you can set LNC equals. Uh, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me. No modulating pi ln, so I can just do pip install. Yeah, that's right. Cool. And then ready site. Oh god. Da. That might fail because of coin curve. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm, seems like it went okay. Uh, yeah. I want to fix it. Uh, so. Yes, you use coin curve 17, you can't, or, yeah, you use coin curve 17, you can't use um, 18. Mm, wait, so it didn't work? It says it successfully installed no. it. Let's see, it did coin curve 17 instead of 18. And so, and where are you seeing that? Found existing, uninstalling, reinstalling. It seems like it did it, though? Yeah, no, it did it. I'm just, for, uh, it depends on the version or whatever. There's just one version or whatever that tries to use... It's all pile in, but with a um, coin curve 18. Uh, yeah, that sounds bad. Um, okay, so what I want to do here is I want to use this LNRPC thing, right, to get an invoice. So instead of doing invoice here, I want to do LNRPC dot, is it invoice? Oh, is it RPC? I think this is like, I'm so... one how does someone use this someone does like l1 get route oh that is it. it is okay so i can directly call and i can directly call that invoice um and i just need to figure out what to pass the invoice so and client uh digin def invoice I just want to see what the options are that you can pass it, right? So it's a, uh, okay, so I can pass in an inset amount and a label and a description, right? So pass in a, how much do we want to charge for this? Um, is it amount inset? Um, I don't know, let's charge 5,000 sats or 555 five, five sats for giggles. And then 
label, I think you always have to add a new label. So, uh, man. And then description would be, oh, what the hell? The description would be, why is it so hard? Description is going to be equal to um, payment for, and if we want to be really fancy, we do like the endpoint, whatever endpoint, um, endpoint, endpoint, which like, I don't, I'm not going to make this super cool, but like you could basically like figure out what the endpoint is from the request, right? Um, uh -huh. And um, however many times, no, it's pay-per-view though, so you have to pay every time you do it, right? And it's only valid once. So, yeah. That's kind of a fun thing. Cause it, so I called this, like, pay-per-view, right? So, like, make you, like, pay an invoice every time you want the new thing. Which isn't amazing, but, um... Uh, yeah, well, what you want is... What you want is for it to just have, like, its own token system, right? And so, like, the tokens... Yeah, would do it. But, this, but the name of this is, like, pay-per-view, right? So I'm just writing something that's, like, dumbly gonna... Um, gotcha. So once I get the invoice back, the invoice object is going to have some stuff on it. I forget. Like, oh, why is this annoying? Um, let's go to doc, lightning, invoice, lightning, invoice, dot seven, dot md. What does it respond back with? It responds back with a bolt 11 is the object that I want it to do. And the, Oh, I, it'll, oh, it'll tell me what the payment hash is. Okay, so it'll pass back the bolt 11 and the payment hash, right? Um, so I'm gonna get back, this invoice should have in it a, so it should return like the bolt 11, bolt 11 is gonna be equal to the invoice, bolt 11, right? And then the payment hash that we're expecting should also come back. So I should get the payment hash, um, so what I really want to do is I just want to add it to this invoice hashes, right? So I want to do invoice hashes dot, dot append payment hash invoice payment hash, right? So this is like, so this is like, it'll look for it, right? Um, cool. That should work. And then here, I'll just, instead of passing back format invoice, format Okay, that should work. Um, this should work. This should like magically work, right? Um, yeah. Other than the fact that I can't pay more in images, this should like this should basically be all we need to make this like whole thing work. Um, only thing is like, um, um, I want to do like a I want to actually make this like pay per view. So I'm gonna say pound equals false return found. Um, I can delete this out now, maybe. I'm gonna delete this out now. Um, um, this is how, like, so make it pay per view by deleting it after it's found, right? Oh my god. Oh my god. Why is this so. whatever. If pay per view. Pay per view means you pay every time. Um, so I don't know how you delete. Delete? Is it just Dell? Dell. Dell. Pre image hash. From Emily's Hashers? Does that work? No, Lisa. How do you delete a thing out of a list? Why am I so dumb? Um, I think that'll work. Huh? There's a way to delete a thing from a delete object. Delete from list Python. I just like, type delete. Remove an item. I think you just called Dell. Uh, list remove. Dell list one. I'm so confused. Oh my god, what is this? Delete an item and using pop? No. I can just do delete. Where's the delete? It's remove. Okay, we can just call remove of the object? Okay, cool. Let's do that. Just call remove.
Okay. I don't even think I have to do a found. I could just try to remove it every time. Whatever. This is a little bit of like an optimization. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, stop. Run. Did it break it? Okay. Oh, it did break it. Um, RPC method called payment for duplicate label. Okay. This label thing has to be different every time. What happens if I don't pass in a label? I think it'll throw up. I have to give it a new label every time. So let's give it a label that's like, I don't know. Um, uh, I just need some random entropy here so I can get a different label every time. Um, format random. How do I do random thing? Random label. Uh, random label equals. I don't know. How do you do random data in Python? Python get random string. I don't know if it's slow. Oh, maybe my laptop is slow. Okay, this seems great. Let's just do this. Um, import random string, random word. Great. Uh, let's do like a 15 character random word. Great. Let's try that. Does that work? Seems fine. Okay. Where's curl? Curl. We're on 81, right? I think. Needs payment. Okay, so it didn't give me an invoice on that. Hey, there's my invoice, right? And so if I like pay this invoice, which you're saying I can't pay my own invoice, Cody? I'd have to like spin up yeah, another shell, wouldn't I? With lightning sail. Everyone's right, it doesn't work. Hey. So, you have to pass in the uh, RPC directory. Yeah. There, never mind. Payment is destined for cells. Why not? Come on, Core Lightning. So, I like have to spin up another lightning shell, right? So, I could do like make dir. I don't know. Um. Just like make dir <gasps> out and then do. Oh, I just closed my whole RPC. thing. I just closed the whole thing. I'm such a, all right, let's go to my ruffles. Let's find this one I just accidentally closed. Um, this one. Oh, we've only been working on this for an hour. Okay. Um, right. But that was, okay, well, it's basically working now, question mark, except I have to like make a whole new thing and pay the invoice myself. Um, but this is like all you need, question mark? I don't know. It's upset because my, Thing isn't running. Um, is Bitcoin D running? D. Is it still running? No. Bitcoin D. Rush test. Pull back fee. Should work and then yeah and then uh major was it lightning uh info major um
That work? Cool. So I just need one more shell. I'm gonna do lightning shell. Lightning CLI. Lightning directory equals PWD lightning to network first test. Yeah, okay. So now I have two of them. Now I should like make a channel between them, have them pay each other money. I don't know, I'm like hand wave. Yeah. <laughs> but in theory, if I like pay the pre image, it should work, right? I don't know. Cool. Okay. Cody, is that enough? Is this like a good. Oh, why is yeah, that? it's great. And this, I guess I'll make a good basic game tutorial too. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. So I think just things to add. Probably gonna change the uh, title of this video. Yeah, so I think just things to add. I'm probably gonna change the title of this video. Yeah, Can you push this? I'm, I'll make a fork. But, um. Uh, sure. And then just adding kind of like room style caveats to it of like what you can access with the thing. yeah it's so like I've like i've never done like auth tokens before add some to do's you mean like yeah of just like for because you pass back the like where are you getting the rune from are you, are you doing a run or no there's no runes on this um that's a fun thing to do i think there's a rune python library right um, so you would want to use like a, so that's a really good, that would be a separate, I think, good, like extra tutorial, right? Is how to use runes to make your own caveats for your own like APIs, maybe? Yeah. Um, well, for the caveat, because this is the thing, right? Is that the caveats aren't on the node side. The caveats are just on the, uh, Yeah, you'd have side. to define them for yourself. So I think that would be really fun. Like if you have a service, like how would you use runes to like define your like tokens, right? Or what you're paying for? Um, yeah. Uh, so like you could kind of have it you could have something where like it's people can pay however much they want and then you could make the caveat based on how much they pay right for every sat they pay that gets them like an extra mm -hmm. like extra like I don't know however many hits and then you can build that into the token that you give back in response to that invoice payment um, might be a fun thing um, uh Ooh, there's not one. There's a Juji in rune dot. Runes are implemented in C, but I thought there was a Python library. Let me go look on PyPy. Um, maybe we can like hang out tomorrow and do this. Is that? Yeah, sure. It's like a uh, check out for rune stuff. Runes. Um. Yeah, it's here. Um, yeah, so basically this would let you, this little, we, yeah, so next time I think we can, um, we can go through how do you write your own, like, runes for your own website, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is the server. So basically we can follow this and it'll, like, make our own little runes and so then whenever we, um... I go back over here. So our to dos are um, add custom runes for our um, for our server, right? So this is all internal auth stuff. And here's some examples of things we might want to do: is how many requests can we make? Um, what endpoints can we access? Right? Um, uh, is there like a how long is it good for? Um, how many calls can we make? Can we make in a time period? So like rate limiting, right? Um, no. Is there anything else we might want to do with like a rune, Cody? Um, I think uh, having a number. Wait, you already have how many requests we can make? Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the big one. Okay. And then, um, and then the other thing we'd want to do, I think that's it, right? And the only other thing we didn't do is like pay the invoice thing and show that that works. Yeah. I think that's it. Um, what yeah. kind of might be fun then is we can take this and we can package it up as like a, um, is there a way we could like package this up as like a, we could take this little invoice function thing that we've got. Maybe there's a way that we can um, build like a little decorator that you can easily use for Flask stuff, right? 
So then you could just Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you've seen Bolt Wall before, but like just doing a Flask version of that, basically. Oh, okay. No, I don't know what that yeah. is. But I was like, we can pack... Wall real fast, it's, um, it's Buck's thing. Oh, okay. If you have a link, I'll check it out later. Um, but it might be kind of fun to like package this up as like a... Um, you just import this little like function, right? And decorate it with stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's... Here, let me just show it to you real fast, just because I think this is exactly I what you kind of had in mind, but okay. the way that he did it was for, um, yeah, the way he did it was for, so if you check out here. Oh, hang on, uh, yeah, let me come look at your thing, make it big, big screen version, I just found it, okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, right, so it's just like, bolt wall, and then you have like, a couple of these things, Oh, okay. Where you like set up the press, and you say like this one's above the bolt wall, and so there's no requirements. All these are below the bolt wall, <laughs> and so these require payment and proper LSAT access, right? Oh, cool. But, okay. Yeah. So like just either do it this way, right? As like a middleware for Flask, or just like add a decorator to each one of the routes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. This yeah. is like an express thing. can take like multiple arguments or uh, like, I don't know, like the type of rune or whatever, or like the, like the caveats that for the rune that it has to require, whatever. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah. So when most people make like AI little like services and stuff, are they doing it in Flask or like what's the most popular framework? For uh, well, they're all doing it in Python. And so okay. Flask is one of the things that they decide to use, right? But yeah. like uh like Lalu's idea was if you go to so if we go to like last AI app example called an AI web app. Is it like a REPL one? Here we go. Right, so like we go look at this. Is there code here? Yeah there we go. Right, so here, this is like we're basically doing wrappers around Flask or whatever. Yeah. So this, or so we have like our own wrapper, or we could just like make a switch to Flask or whatever mm -hmm. that like adds this to every single one, and you could say like for a two route. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I think what you would want right. to do maybe is um one thing that might be kind of fun in the decorator. So if we package up our decorator as like a little thing you could just easily import and use in your Flask app, right? Um, you can make it such that the decorator could something about the way that you do the decorator. Then, so like, I mean, this is something to think about. I think I mean, that, here, what I was okay. thinking is like we just wrap the flask. Right, and so then you do like oh. from LM Flask import Flask and oh. all of these things. Okay, just the exact same. And then it... that's what, yeah, what uh, Lalu was planning to do is he was going to wrap the requests package. Oh, okay. Right? You just do like instead of import requests, mm -hmm. you do like import LN requests, and then like all of the request stuff that you do or whatever can handle it, but that's on the um, client side, right? The client is like hitting these things, it gets a 402 and knows how to handle it. Oh, okay. Right? But for this side, this is on the server side, right? Yeah. Like that, just wrap full mask with Ellen, then it's a, uh, you just change this one line for the import. Yeah. And then all this stuff becomes lightning enabled. Okay. You still have to do setup though on the back end, right? Like, there's got to be setup. For yeah, that you'd be like import Flask, and then up on the top, you would be like Flask oh. dot node connection equals CLN whatever, right? Yeah. Like, the only downside to that though is that if someone already has a Flask app, adding it in means they kind of have to like edit the Flask thing, and if Flask ever changes or forks, then you have to like keep up. Yeah, that makes sense. To date. Um, yeah, because yeah, that it's just kind of like a gimmicky thing or whatever. That like I know, um, like uh, what's his face, um, uh, DZ did the same thing where he was like he did this for OpenAI, right? Where it's just like um, you just change this import for from WebAI import mm, OpenAI, yeah. and then off of the top you just do OpenAI dot Lightning address equals whatever, and then the rest of your app doesn't change at all. It's just like cool. but all of the wrapping for OpenAI gets wrapped in four hundred two. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Interesting. 
Yeah, that's yeah. like for this one, it's just we would just take this dot route. Yeah. And in this flat edge, we put then, the wrapper on this thing. Yeah, but then how do you like? How do you make your yeah. caveats and stuff? Like, where's like? I think the better. The better I mean, like the more granular way to do it is like do the caveats and stuff yourself right but it's yeah. also just like uh, if you want like just like take an existing flask app and just be like change the one line <laughs> drop in the 402 stuff right. right cool it's also kind of a really fun cool thing yeah that is really cool it's definitely pretty powerful that's for sure yeah cool okay cool. like stop streaming turn off obs great okay. so yeah tomorrow